This video is about my favorite song in the world, August du Marceau by Tom Jobim. One of the reasons I love this song so much is it has this power, it somehow just manages to make me smile no matter what is going on in my life. When I hear this song, I smile. I also had this really interesting experience talking about this song. Less than a year ago, I started making these daily short videos on Instagram. There was one video that I made with a friend of mine talking about Indian classical music and it just went completely wild. I think it got past 5 million views. It was my first really big viral video on Instagram. And I hadn't even been making those kinds of videos for too long. And just as that one was starting to skyrocket, I had made this other video about the song, Agoshi Marso. At the time that I made it, I really don't think there were, could have been more than, I don't know, 100 or maybe 200 people from Brazil who were following me at the time. But I mentioned that it's my favorite song, and not only is it my favorite song, but it's in my favorite language for singing, which is Portuguese. I don't speak any Portuguese, this is purely as a listener. It just has this really lovely combination of different types of sounds. It has a lot of diphthongs, which is when you have uh, more than one vowel combined, like ao. It has a lot of hard sounds and a lot of soft sounds, and it has this just beautiful way that they all integrate with each other. Well, when I made that video, it was really shocking because all of a sudden, I started getting so many messages and so many comments from people from Brazil, and my follower count started going through the roof. And there were so many other songs from Brazil that people started to request for me. This was perfect for me because even when I was in high school, my favorite music to listen to happened to be Brazilian music. But the only thing that I really knew of at the time was Bossa Nova, which is wonderful. I just didn't know that there were so many other artists that were really amazing that I hadn't heard of, and even entire genres that I didn't know of, like Shuro. So I get asked a lot, why do I make so many videos about Brazilian music? And there's really two reasons. Number one is I get a lot of requests to talk about those songs. I keep a list and when people comment on videos and they ask me to listen to other songs or they ask me to talk about other songs, uh, actually I actually have two lists. I have one is my listening list where I write down everything I've never heard before and I have a suggestions list, things that I do know about and, uh, and things that people have asked me to make a video about. A lot of the times people suggest things, they're already somewhere on my list of ideas that I've had that I want to talk about, but when I start hearing a lot of people make comments and they want me to do the same song, I'll kind of bump those up higher and higher on my list. Same thing with my listening list. When a lot of people ask me to talk about the same song that I've never heard of, I'll bump that up higher and higher. The second reason I talk about Brazilian music so much is I really only talk about music that I personally think is good. And there's a lot of really great Brazilian music out there, so this is a fantastic combination for me. For whatever reason, I don't know the full history here, but in the United States, jazz musicians are very familiar usually with bossa nova, and that's about it. Other than things like maybe Girl from Ipanema, which has made its way into American popular culture. Outside of bossa nova, there seems to be very little awareness in the United States of other music from Brazil. Now, my understanding about this song is that it's sort of painting a picture. It's like a collage of ideas. Jobim wrote the song while trying to build a, like a boundary wall on his property during some torrential rain. I've heard some people say that March is the rainiest month in Brazil. I've heard other people say that it just marks the end of the rainy season. In any event, the rain was causing a lot of trouble for him. And this collage, it's like a, a list of words and ideas, and each one of them starts with a, which is it is. So it's a stick, it's a stone, it's a sliver of glass. All of the ideas of all of these different things that are kind of flowing down the stream, flowing down with these waters. And it even wraps up into all sorts of things that have to do with life. Just as our own lives and deaths are part of a big steady stream, it's part of a force of nature. And there's no way to stop this progression which really enters the music in a very interesting way. Now, here's the first line in English, and I should point out that Jobim himself wrote the English lyrics. A stick, a stone, it's the end of the road. It's the rest of the stump, it's a little alone. It's a sliver of glass, it is life, it's the sun. It is night, it is death, it's a trap, it's a gun. What's especially interesting is that Jobim did not make the English lyrics an exact translation of the original Portuguese lyrics. And here's the most interesting difference. In the Portuguese lyrics, it mentions how the waters of March mark the end of summer. But when coming up with the English lyrics, he knew that this would be mostly for an English-speaking audience who lives mostly in the Northern Hemisphere, where the seasons are reversed. And so in the English version, it doesn't say that it's marking the end of summer, it says that it represents the promise of spring. So far, this is all interesting, but it's the music that really makes a big difference. Not only is this my favorite song, but it starts with my very favorite chord, 
and it's an extremely unusual chord to start a song with because it's so unstable. It sounds like this. Why is this chord so unstable? Why is it such an unusual chord to start a song with? Here's why. The chord is really a dominant seventh chord. It's, that part is pretty common at least. So if, if you're not a musician, dominant seventh chord normally sounds something like this. But Jomim is doing something a little bit different to this chord, which I'll show you in just a moment. But first I want to show you this last note that I played. This note is called the seventh of the dominant seventh. And I'm not going to get too into music theory, but what I will show you is that this note has an extremely strong tendency to resolve down. It must go like this. If it doesn't do that, it would just wildly upset our expectations of what that note should do. Listen to how the chord usually resolves. And can you hear that top note going? Well, what's unusual about this chord is instead of putting the seventh on the top like that, the seventh is now on the bottom. Instead of being here, we can hear it in the bass. And so this really creates this expectation that the chord must resolve down like this. Or at least the bass line has to resolve down. Now the most typical way it would resolve, it would sound like this. And if you know a little bit about major, uh, about music theory rather, then what it's going to do is it's going to resolve to the first inversion of a major chord. If you don't know anything about music theory, don't worry, just listen. We expect it to resolve like this. And instead the bass does go down, but it resolves a little bit differently. What's so beautiful here is that if we listen to the bass line, it creates this illusion like it's constantly descending. It's not really always descending, but it sounds like it's constantly descending, just like the constant downpour of rain. We have this bass line that sounds something like this. And so if I add chords to that, I get something like this. This song is recorded so many times, but the recording that I'm going to be talking about is the very famous one, where Jobim is singing with Elise Regina. This recording is so incredible, and I highly recommend you watch it on YouTube because you can actually see them smiling and laughing at each other and whistling. It's just a, a wonderful performance. Like I said, it always puts a smile on my face. Now on this recording that I'm talking about, listen to all of the other instruments. First of all, we have the piano. and. The piano is doing a, a number of interesting things. First of all, in my musical imagination, I interpret a lot of what I'm hearing as little sprinkling raindrops or a foot stepping in a puddle. Just listen, at the very beginning, we hear this chord. And the first thing we hear from the piano is this. It's like a little sprinkle of rain. Also, in those moments when the bass line isn't descending, we keep having this illusion that there's a constant downward motion because we'll hear something else with a descending chromatic line. It sometimes is the strings, very often it's the strings, sometimes it's the piano, sometimes it's even voices that are singing these downward descending lines, and I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. I'm going to attempt to sing the first part of this. Please keep in mind I don't speak any Portuguese. I have some very generous followers who offer to send me voice memos from time to time with uh, basically them pronouncing these words slowly for me, so I'm doing the best that I can. But I really want you to hear how this works, and I want you to hear how that bass line is descending, and how other parts of the music are descending, and it just kind of creates this beautiful illusion of rainfall. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. And then what's really interesting is that if I keep going, then is when we'll hear those strings continuing the line. We hear them saying something like this. And then the strings. Da-da-da. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing here as well as on my other social media platforms. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for making it possible to create videos like this one.